experience it, right? Yeah. Yeah, it is. We don't lose him, and then we did. <laughs> <laughs> This is pretty fantastic. It's hard to believe, but this area supported a tremendous civilization. And there are ruins scattered throughout this place that are phenomenally large. And as you can see, the scale is quite large. The matates, the number of mortar holes up here is impressive to say the least. It's a, it's a pretty fun climb up here. You have two options. You can uh, confidently ascend this thing. Look at me, I'm in all kinds of photo gear. Thankfully I have a vest made by Rob um, and the vest guy. And uh, it's also, also a wildlife guy and a friend of mine, but he basically made this vest that supports all my gear anyway. The whole point is that um, the walk up has these handholds throughout the way where you can just reach into the finger holes and pull yourself up. So a lot of what was engineered here was to was to ease um, the uh, the labor, I guess, to ease the the burden that was shared by all. So if only we could find a way to ease each other's burdens by helping to fill in the potholes of life, or to um, create handholds for people to pull themselves up to the next rung. That's what I'm trying to do here. So. Till next time, <laughs> enjoy your day. I'm Ray with us385.com. I'm out here with my friends, John and Bob. We almost froze last night, but uh, we survived. And now we're having a kick-ass walk today. And I wish you guys the same. Talk to you later. I'm out here in the middle of nowhere. You saw all of the ruins that are out here. It's absolutely desolate. And, let, and yet, look right here, what I've been mentioning all along, mylar balloons out in the middle of nowhere. Who would have thought, right? I would have thought because I heard it from somewhere. Here it is. 
it's your day. The thing about letting go of these balloons, not only are they a distraction and a nuisance for others, it's also a hazard. This wire that it's on, the, it's the string, it hasn't deteriorated and it's not going to. It's a hazard. It's a hazard for wildlife. hollowed out, filled with dirt, a uh, stone. And what Ray noted is that there are seemingly peck marks in it, as if somebody might have used this to hold it for as an instrument for doing something. And to show that there were people here, seven inches from that piece of of stone that we don't know for sure what is, but we can speculate, is a lovely chart. And the chart could be dated by the right archaeologist to a certain period, but it's pretty old, black and, and uh, white, clearly clay, um, man works clay rather than limestone, 76 and 79. National Park Service archaeologist testing sections are talking about. standing in the center of Pueblo Alto in Chaco Canyon and I'm just turning around so you can get a, a full view of what exactly the magnitude of this place is. Look at this. You can see some kind of sheep or elk droppings along the trail. really don't know. I didn't pick it up and taste it this time so can't be for sure but crossing through here um, show you just how big this is. I've been to the, uh, the Colosseum for an example and those are some large structures diameter wise and this is uh, whenever I utter the word awesome from now on this is the kind of stuff I'm going to be talking about. This is awesome. It's, uh, it's hard to experience the magnitude what exactly it is, how big this, this location is, without walking through here in person to see what it is <laughs> that's been built by previous civilizations long before us. Look at this. This is how cold it is. There's still standing ice. It's cold. There's just not a lot of precipitation that's been following. Um, I mean falling. So we don't have a lot of, we don't have a lot of standing snow on the ground, just like in most places up north right now. But uh, wow, what a place.
built on the south side to serve all of those worker bee community. I mean, look at these ruins up here. Yeah, th those are all ruins. Those are all ruins there. Oh my God. Oh my God. This, this is still part of the stuff. Yep. Cool. That's great. That's where the Anasazi ruin site was. I, as a boy, I used to climb up there and look at all the pictographs on the back oh. end of the wall up there. The archaeologist Scott Travis surveyed that site in 2003. He said that was a 100-room site. Probably, yeah. So they would come down this side and then go walk across and go back and come to this area. And so that's how they collected water <laughs> at night. So this is where the battle took place, the final battle right here in this area, where they killed a lieutenant and the uh, lieutenant lost his life here and that finally uh, freed the Navajo from being captured from off of this rock here. They didn't kill the lieutenant, the, their leader, and they would have been still here. Once their leader was killed, they hightailed it out of here. The soldiers, yeah. My grandmother used to talk, point to that pinnacle. She says, look at the top of Spider Rock. You see those white bandage streaks of rock at the top? Those have been bleached by the bones of the kids that died up there. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, so she shows us evidence. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> a form of discipline yeah. that will last your whole life. That's long. right. Yeah.